Please listen carefully. Welcome back to a sunny, if somewhat slightly overcast, November morning. I have the day off today, and so I thought I'd take the opportunity to post a little video. It's been quite a while since I've done anything regarding living with the leaf, and I guess the old adage applies, if you haven't got anything worthwhile saying, then say nothing at all. Uh, yeah, I guess that applies to some extent. A few days ago, we had our three, uh, third anniversary of leaf ownership, so having owned it now for three years, I thought it was a good time to just post a little update video really see where we are there's so many other people posting stuff about EV ownership a lot of it would be going over old ground it's good to just post once in a while a lot of my focus more recently in terms of video output has been on the zero the zero DSR electric motorbike so I'm not going to waffle on too much about it uh, for those who are interested you might want to have a look at the recent trip I did uh, in August. I became the first person ever to ride an electric motorbike from Land's End to John O'Groats. But I didn't stop there. I carried on up to uh, Orkney and then crossed Orkney, went up to Shetland and rode to the top of Shetland. So it's quite a first. Worthwhile watching if you've got time. But enough about electric motorcycles. We're talking about the leaf. So three years of living with the leaf. Things have moved on quite a bit in three years. Not so much as I'd like them to in some ways. We'll come on to that in a bit. But I think certainly public awareness levels have increased massively. That's something I have personally witnessed. There's a lot more people who are slightly better informed about them in the wider general public, even if the press isn't and still continues to publish nonsense about EVs. Uh, and despite fairly poor marketing on the point uh, from the part of a lot of manufacturers a lot of awareness has come about really through EV owners uh, you know who tend to be the biggest advocates and there's a good reason why uh, a lot of dealerships end up employing people who come in and buy an EV from them because quite often they are better informed than some of the people who work in the in the dealerships themselves. A big part of living with the leaf has been really the ease of ownership. We've had there were some small issues at the start of ownership in terms of noises from the wheel, um, which which I went into in another video. I won't go into now. Um, that was fixed all under warranty. Aside from that and the accident, my daughter well. The accident was caused to my daughter when she was driving it. Again, another video. Um, we've had no problems with the car whatsoever. Servicing costs have been minimal. We haven't had any mechanical issues. One thing I will say is people's dealership experience tends to vary. And so if you're new to the world of EV ownership, you may want to look around and find um, a dealer that you that you like that you get on with um, I actually changed my dealer I'm not going to mention names but uh, I moved from one dealership to a different one and uh, I found the experience a whole uh, much better at the new dealership and the price is cheaper it's probably actually my daughter who does the bulk of the driving in the leaf now uh, she commutes not too far away uh, for work and I work from home so she's generally using the car several times during the week I use it less often and it's cheaper indeed for her to use the car than it is to go by bus and obviously far more convenient <clears throat> she's also doing her Institute of Advanced Motorists IAM Road Smart um, uh, advanced training for her advanced driving test which she'll hopefully be doing soon I did it last year um, I'm an observer with the advanced bikes group so I'm a big advocate of doing advanced riding advanced driving it's very good very good stuff uh, can't sing its praises too highly so if you haven't done it consider it seriously I believe I'm the first person to do the advanced driving test in the UK in an electric car as well 
Uh, the reason I say that is they made a bit of a song and dance about somebody else doing it in a Tesla recently, um, in, a, in an email news shot, and you know, said, "Oh, this guy appears to be the first person to pass his test in a, an electric car." So I, yeah, one doesn't like to blow one's own trumpet, but you know, facts are facts. So I got on the phone to them and said, "Yeah, I think you'll find I did it last June in a Nissan Leaf." So, you know. Can we put the record straight if we're going to sing, sing the praises of EVs and promote them, which is very good. If if I am a, you know, if I am road smarter com coming round to that view, then that's very good. The infrastructure hasn't come on as much as I'd like it to have done. I was hoping to see quite a few more rapid chargers rolled out around the country, uh, and there need to be more rapid chargers rolled out around the country. The reality is, if you own an EV and you've got off-road parking which most people who buy EVs probably have, then most of the time you're going to be charging at home overnight. Yeah, it's one of the great things about owning an EV. You get home, you plug it in, next morning you've got a full tank. And it's fantastic. It's so liberating not having to go and fill up the car. As, as simple as that sounds, you know, people talk about the inconvenience of plugging in a car. I mean, really? compared to the inconvenience of having to go out of your way to a different place to fill up with dinosaur juice. I mean, come on, it's not difficult to plug a car in when you get home. So, Ecotricity started taking payment for charging. And a lot of people were outraged at this. Now, personally, I don't see how they can be outraged about it. I mean, it's frankly ludicrous to assume that a company should just go on funding and paying for electricity out of its own generosity. When I bought this Nissan Leaf three years ago, I knew full well that Ecotricity were going to start charging for the electricity. They were quite open and explicit about that. So for, for people to say, you know, they weren't aware of that. It seems bizarre. If I knew three years ago when I signed up, that was the case. And in fact, they didn't bring in charging for the electricity as soon as they initially said they were going to. So people actually got a, a quite a lot more. It might have been up, up to about 18 months more, if memory serves me well, <clears throat> than they were expected to get a free electricity. Uh, in terms of criticism of the rapid charging network, apart from the still the insufficient spread of rapid chargers, um, as a lot of other people have commented, the payment method, having to use an app, is just so stupid, let's be honest about it. It's not how it should work. It's obvious how it should work. You roll up. You use a debit card or credit card, you pay for what you use. Simple as that. It can be contactless, you know, it, you're not talking about large sums of money. The fact that it's such a faff still and you have to use an app is, is frankly strange. Regarding Ecotricity, I personally have moved away from them. Uh, I've moved over to a company called Bulb. Uh, for a couple of reasons really. Firstly, they were quite expensive. Uh, there are plenty of other, you know, green companies around if you look for it. If you want 100% renewables uh, supply component of your energy usage, or electricity usage, I should say, um, there are other companies around. So I decided to, to shop around and that was really triggered. Yeah. I don't want to get too political here, but let's just say, <laughs> let's just say when something happens, something significant happens uh, in the country in terms of <clears throat> a referendum, we might we might want to mention or not mention, and the outcome of that it, that referendum causes a company to insult people who didn't vote the way they happened to agree with. Um, make all kinds of disparaging remarks. Yeah, you know, it's not really the wisest business decision to insult a large section of a user base. Um, so, yeah, I, I just thought, well, I'll, I'll take my business elsewhere. Uh, it might sound petty, but 
you know, I can pay to be insulted by other people. So that was part of my decision. So it seems strange. I'm part defending ecotricity. They are, you know, notwithstanding my comments about their potential political leanings, many of which, you know, a lot of attitudes of theirs I agree with. Yeah, you know, I like, um, I like a lot of what they say. It just goes to show you can't lump all people in in one big basket and assume that because they believe X about Y, they also believe A about B. Um, people are complicated. Well-reasoned and logical people don't just buy their, you know, their values en masse from one big box. You, you selectively pick. If you're sensible, you selectively pick your opinions based on reason, debate, discussion. So the fact that I, I may disagree with Ecotricity's political stance in one respect doesn't mean that I would dismiss them in other respects. A lot, like I say, a lot of what they do, uh, a lot of what they campaign for, I completely agree with. And uh, good luck to them, and I'll support them. When, when necessary, I'll support them. And I, I, have to, I have to compliment them in the first place for rolling out the electric highway, because nobody else has done it. And, you know, they were there first of all so fair play to them and thank you thank you to them yes uh, one of the regular journeys we do is up to my in-laws which is up in northeast lincolnshire this trip up to northeast lincolnshire involves a stop a necessary stop you know this is a 24 kilowatt hour generation 2 or generation 1.5 now um nissan leaf so we have to stop en route and we stop at Gonaby Moor services on the A1, which is near Grantham. And for, for, some, for some period of time, when Ecotricity initially changed their model to half hour block charges and charged six pounds for it, that was pretty unpleasant because the reality was we couldn't manage with only 80% charge. We needed more like just over 90% to make the journey from there to our destination because there is no other rapid charging facilities between there and our destination. Lincolnshire, three years on, still remains bereft of a, a rapid charging point around Lincoln. And it's such a big bugbear now. You know, Lincoln is not an insignificant city. There are major trunk roads going through Lincoln. And three years later, no, still no network has rolled out a rapid charger in Lincoln. It drives me crackers. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, three years ago I thought, ah, it's probably going to be imminent, you know, if they're doing, of course they do all the motorways first, motorway services, but they'll, they'll stick one in around Lincoln. Nah. Now, hopefully, uh, the great irony here is, of course, things have developed again recently, and BP, talk of the devil, and Shell, uh, notably, have both said that they will be rolling out rapid charging stations to petrol four cuts. Uh, fuel filling station, we'll better call them from now on, <laughs> properly. Uh, speaking of which, what's BP going to be called? Mm, British Power, maybe. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they will, they at least, will put something in place around Lincoln. I know lots of people have moaned about the pricing structure that they've outlined uh, on the part of Shell for rapid charging at one of their charge points, but the, real, the reality really is that most of your charging as an EV owner is done at home. And the, the, the net fuel saving costs compared to, elect, compared to petrol and diesel are phenomenal. It's, it's actually quite an interesting <laughs> psychological sign that people bemoan paying a few pennies for electricity uh, when they've when they're, they've been accustomed for years to paying several, several pounds for, for petrol, and they don't bat an eyelid about it. IKEA Coventry, which has, under its roof, an Ecotricity rapid charger. Uh, it's probably in use. Uh, no, it's not, amazingly. Well, I suppose it's, it's Friday. I'm not going to rapid charge here, actually, because I want to rapid charge somewhere else. More of that in a bit. Now, I don't think I've talked about this before, but... Um, 
<laughs> might sound old fashioned. But I actually still prefer parking using wing mirrors. Reverse parking. I do find it easier. Apart from when you're getting quite close. Due to the nature of this rear window, it's quite hard to see out the back. I find rear visibility is a bit lacking. I've never mentioned that before, I don't think. But it is. Rear visibility is not great. So occasionally the overhead camera, um, the rear view camera, comes in handy for reverse parking. But actually negotiating the car into a space, I still find it easier with wing mirrors. There we go. Each to their own. Ah, there's another leaf. We're all over the place. That's so loud. <laughs> Take care. Take care. <laughs> it's quite funny, I've just been to Coventry to get a few bits and um, from IKEA. And as I was just heading off, uh, I saw a couple of guys pushing a, a white leaf in into the store. Uh, wandered over, expressed sympathy as a fellow leaf owner, and just and just got chatting um, to Salah or Dean, D or Dean. Hello, hello, if you're watching, <laughs> Dean. Uh, yeah, I just had a quite a nice long chat with him. Um, so he'd never never rapid charged before, uh, so uh, he was kind of crying out for a bit of help, which I'm only too glad to, to give. Fellow EV owners, we're all very, you know, mutually supportive. I, Hopefully people are gen generally, but uh, it's one of those situations where it's nice to, to hang around and help somebody out who needed it. So it's completely flat battery, totally flat. Also his phone completely run out, so he's got no means of charging, uh, no means of using the, the phone app to charge the car or anything. So I, um, I phoned up Ecotricity and the credit where credit's due. Ecotricity were fantastic. All they wanted was the, the charge point number and um, I passed the, the phone over to Dean who gave them his, his card details and they took payment over the phone and, um, and supplied him with the charge. I suspect if he hadn't had a means of, char of, of paying, I suspect they might have just given him a free charge. I, d I don't know. That's not, you know, that's by no means official. Um, I wouldn't assume it. But uh, I guess if somebody was really stuck, yeah, they might, or they might defer payment. I cut a long story short. Had a good old chat with Dean. I ended up staying there for about an hour, but it was really nice. Really, it's, it's always good to chat to fellow leaf owners and help out where you can. And by the time I left, he was on about 80%, and uh, is obviously happy, just relieved to be to be able to carry on his journey. So, uh, hello again, Dean. Nice to meet you, and. Uh, all the best, happy leaf ownership. A recent development in terms of rapid chargers that affects us locally, uh, I'm based in Nuneaton and I'm actually just passing it. There's been a super, uh, supercharger, a rapid charger installed by Polar, uh, one of the Polar Plus, the, the new rapid chargers that they've been, they're installing around the country. Uh, so they installed one at a hotel recently here and uh, what I'll do is um, I've just got to head back home but I'm going to come back out and uh, I will use that. It's kind of good that we've got a rapid charger close to us in the circumstances where we where we need to use the car on an ongoing trip having used it fairly extensively. Now I should I should point out that this doesn't happen very often at all. When, when it has happened we've had to go down to Corley services on the M6 which is not a massive distance away, but it's inconvenient because because of the, the way motorway services are in the UK, in that you can only get on and off them officially uh, through the proper junctions rather than access roads. Of course, a relatively recent announcement is the upcoming release of the Nissan Leaf Generation 2, as they're calling it. Now, it's a bit annoying, this nomenclature, the Leaf I'm driving was called a Generation 2 at the time because they made quite a few changes to the first generation Leaf. The new one is of course a different body design so in that respect yeah I can see why they've uh, they've dubbed it a generation, second generation but um, where does that leave me? You know which generation is this 1.5? I don't know why they just didn't call the new one you know third generation. It could be interesting that the new Leaf because Having boosted the 
the battery from 30 kilowatt hour up to 40 kilowatt hour. Oh, this is 24 on this car. That's what in the realms of a, a much more attractive a car for many, many people. The thing is, if they're going to follow that up with the release of a 60 kilowatt hour battery the year after next, I do wonder what effect that's going to have on people buying the 40 kilowatt hour. The, uh, the 40 kilowatt hour, the generation two is supposedly out the beginning of next year. So we'll, we'll see how that sells. I think it will do quite well. Of course, the generation two Leaf has got to compete against the Tesla Model 3. Now it's going to hit market first, of course. So in that respect, it will, it will already be out there and you'll be able to buy it in the UK. Whereas the, the, Model 3, the Tesla Model 3 is probably not realistically going to hit UK shores. I'm guessing here, but I'm guessing it's not going to hit UK shores till 2018. But having seen the Model 3 now, a fairly close up look, I have to say I'm very impressed by it. It's better than I thought it was going to be. I didn't think they were going to retain quite as much functionality uh, that they've got in the Model S and the Model X. But they, they appear to have retained an awful lot of it, so it's very good. I thought the display was going to be rubbish. So I didn't think you know, the landscape format would lend itself to, to a nice display, but it does look good. It really does look good. Now, inevitably, I've had the conversation with people, fellow EV owners, about, you know, are you going to, when are you going to change your car, John? When are you going to update? And the reality is, I don't need to. You know, this, this, and I can't justify it really financially. We own this Leaf outright. You know, there's no finance on it. Bought it three years ago in full. So it was all paid and done. Done and dusted three years ago. There's no ongoing costs to me in terms of finance. I work from home, so I'm not commuting. My daughter's doing some commuting, but it's very, very, very relatively short distance. So I really can't justify having buying a new car for the sake of it if I don't really need it. The only time when it would benefit me really is when we go and visit family in northeast Lincolnshire. Would be, would, would, yeah, I'll benefit from a, a bigger range. But otherwise, I don't need that bigger range. I think as more and more EVs go on the second-hand market, they're going to be snapped up, actually. And the prices, the increase in prices have reflected that. Second-hand leaves have gone up in value. There's another reason I don't need to worry about range too much, and that's easily explained by this place I'm going now. Because we recently had installed here this little baby. And there's nobody here at the moment. How perfect is that? Now this is one of the new polar chargers. Ultra chargers. <laughs> We're going to run out of superlative terms for chargers. <laughs> We're supercharger, ultra charger, mega, char mega charger maybe? Uber charger? This is not far from home and it does mean that if there are circumstances where we do for any reason need to you know the car is running low on charge and we do need to get out then this is an option and it's actually cheaper for me to charge here than it is at home now this is the holiday in express in Nuneaton and I've signed up for Polar Plus now so which is a subscription uh, the first three months are free uh, but this is really straightforward, so there's the card ID, card not valid, interesting. Right, I used this the other week, a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to try it now. Card not valid, okay, this doesn't bode well, let's frame them. I've just showed it my card, I had some issues with it just now, but uh, it seems to be working now. So, um, we'll plug in the old uh, 
malarkey. Do like the design of these, these are nicely designed. Uh, goes. Ah, here we go. It's finally working up. Please connect vehicle. Already done that. I know. Did it out of step. Naughty me. It's locked. Heard it click. Communication okay. Safety check. So it checks all the cable and things. Make sure it's not going to kill somebody. Safety check okay. There we go. Okay, despite that initial problem I had, it seems to be working okay now. Um, very nice having this local to us. Very helpful. Right, I'm going to go back and have my coffee.